Well hey everybody, and welcome down to the weird shop. What I'm going to do today is show you how you can take a board and turn it into a beehive box. It's not expensive and it's not difficult. So just like the video that I showed you how to build the escape board, these plans come from Tony Pisano's book, Build Your Own Beekeeping Equipment. There are two different, uh, two different styles of boxes that he has you to build. He has a, uh, the one that we're going to do, has rabbit joints, and he's also got one with, <laughs> with butt joints. So, uh, I prefer the rabbit joint, um, because I, I have the stuff to make them pretty easily. I think they give a little bit more, uh, ease of setup, because you'll see these rabbits, um, where the sides tuck into on the butt joint. It's just, uh, just edge to edge so i'll show you how to do both but the one we're going to build today is called the rabbit joint high body assembly let's get weird so for the rabbit joint boxes you want two pieces that are 19 and an eight and two pieces that are 16 and a quarter and they uh you want them to be six and five eighths inch wide this is a one by eight it's actually seven and a quarter inches wide it's a little bit of a challenge because this this is an eight foot board I usually only order them in six foot boards because six foot makes one box with, with just a little bit of scrap. And then uh, also my shop is tiny and it's harder for me to have a eight foot board down here. Uh, the, the challenge I get with the eight foot boards is they're too long to run through my table saw. They'll hit <laughs> both walls in the shop. That's how small my shop is. Uh, the second challenge I have is that my 10 inch miter saw doesn't want to cut it, it wants to cut about right here. So then I've got to flip it over, finish the cut, and it's kind of a pain. But because I can't run an eight foot board through my table saw to get it down to six and five eighths, we'll do the best we can getting these pieces cut down. Okay, so we got our pieces cut to length, and since we're gonna cut a little bit off, if you see a knot on the edge, then, then cut that edge off. If you see a good edge, a clean edge, then leave it. Uh, but that's just something to think about when you're just going to cut a little bit off. If you see a knot, do not leave it. So, um, I'll show you here. Just got my saw set up and I'll run this one through. I won't run them all through for you, but you get the idea. <laughs> So we didn't get the whole knot, but what we got was was the loose part. We got, you know, this, this knot super weak. So we've got that cut off. Um, and then we'll just run these rest of these three pieces through, get them down to six and five eighths inch wide. One thing that I did go off book a little bit for was this book does have you use um, cleats to pick the handles up to pick the boxes up or handles if you want to call them that i didn't like theirs i thought they were too small they only make theirs seven inches long so i wrote myself a note um because i knew i wouldn't remember that uh we want to have a 13 and a quarter inch long by one and three eighths inch wide handle we'll install it three inches down from the top of box centered on the short side so um, while i've still got the ripping blade in um, before I put the dado blade in, uh, I've got a 13 and a quarter inch piece I ripped off of that cut off left over from the eight foot board and we'll rip that down to inch and three eighths. Okay, so all the ripping is done. I've got my stack dado in there. It's set up with a three eighths inch wide total chip. I've got my handy dandy tool here because you see so I don't have to measure anything. I lower it down until it just cuts or just touches. And then I pull the fence over, push this hard up against the blade, move my fence over, lock it down. We'll run a test cut, but that's usually right on the money. Another thing I do here is I take away, we're only going to work with the short pieces. We're only putting dados on the short pieces. So I've taken the handles and the long pieces and moved them away so I don't grab the wrong stuff. I'm only making one tonight. Um, I ordered two boards to make two boxes, but the one board wasn't 
very good, so I'm not going to use it for this. But anyway, when you have a bunch of stacks of boards, the short boards and long boards don't look different enough that you can um, make sure you're grabbing the right ones. So I just moved them out of the way. So I'll show you the dado as if we were going to build the butt joint box, and then I'll show you the dado that we're the same dado plus the other dados that we use to make the rabbit joint. All right, so if you're building the butt joint box, then you're ready to assemble them. So this this dado that you made that's three eighths inch deep and five inch wide, or five inch high, three eighths inch deep, that's the frame rest that the frames will sit on inside the box. So um, the only difference is a couple measurements. So uh, I'll, I think I'll put those in a comment below the video instead of trying to confuse you with different measurements but you just know that the butt joint short pieces are shorter than the, the rabbit joint pieces and that the sides the long sides of the butt joint pieces are a little bit longer so um, like I said if, if you're doing the butt joints you're ready to assemble uh, since we're doing the rabbits we have one more uh, change with the saw couple more joints to cut and then we'll be ready to assemble. Hey, the dados are finished on these and this is all I did was the three quarter inch wide by three eighths inch deep dados and those are to accept the long side so uh, all we have to do now is to glue up and I used to use screws um, but uh, if you use a good quality glue an indoor outdoor glue um, honestly the glue will do the holding so the screws are kind of overkill. Uh, well, one thing before we get started, I did mark one line inch and a half over from the side. And that's because this, uh, this piece here is 16 and a quarter. My handles that I'll put on here next after I assemble the case are 13 and a quarter centered. So inch and a half plus inch and a half is three inches. And that is centered in between. So. Um, what we do now, we just put some glue down, put it on the, we don't put it on the top, we only put it on the three quarter inch sections, and I like to use one inch brad nails or staples, whatever you, or not, not brad nails, but staples for sure. And then I use my table saw. I saw me do this for my other B escape. I use my table saw because again, I don't have a ton of extra room in the weird shop. It's a table to use. So this is the primary reason I like the rabbits is because you can put everything together and, and it's got a built in stop. You see where the side hits this, I'm pulling, and then all I have to do is drive my brads, and I'll just put a couple in here for speed. But it's a self square, or, or self, I don't know, self fixing corner. And then if you want to, Flip it over. If you have to see this this edge here, this corner doesn't want to stay together, so you just put a little hand clamp on and you're stuck. So when I do all that, that is the primary reason again why I like the rabbits. Not required by any means. And like this one here, it wants to push out. All right, so I might put a couple more staples in, I might not. But uh, then to install the handles, grab the handles, glue them up. And remember, we're not building a watch here or fine furniture, just put some glue on there. A little, a little bit more than a dab will do you. And this is why. I put that mark on, and then the second thing I did was I took my square and I marked, I, I put it at three inches down. So 
put your square on because you only have two hands. Most of you do anyway. If you don't, hey, good luck, bud. All right, and then you put it on there. You grab your stapler. You don't have to hold nothing. You don't have to measure nothing. You just hit it. So you make sure you're on your line. Make sure you're on your square. Boom. So the rest of the project is put a few more staples in the ends. I'll put a couple more staples in the handles, but that's all there was to it. Um, beekeeping is, is a lot of fun and making your own beekeeping stuff is a lot of fun. Um, one more thing, I guess, before I go, I got the cart ahead of the horse, but I'll use my table to square it. I'll show you here, move the camera. Try to give you the view, but you know your table's square, no doubt. So if you run one edge of your box parallel or, you know, sitting flush with the edge of the table and you run the other edge of your box flush with that edge of the table, you have to be square. No messing around, just you're square. So uh, as I was starting to say, beekeeping is fun. Making your own beekeeping stuff is fun. You don't have to have a ton of tools. You don't have a dado blade. You can use your regular blade and just keep gnawing away at this. Um, you could do it with a handsaw. Um, if you can't, then some lumber yards um, will do milling work for you. And if you tell them the measurements, they'll turn out the pieces that need milled. Um, they can even cut them to length or whatever you need. So um, all that to say that these this board was 79 cents a board foot. So if I use six foot, it cost me $4 to build this. Um, $4 worth of wood to build this. So uh, much cheaper than you can buy it. And then you had the fun and satisfaction of making your own beekeeping stuff. So I enjoyed making the video. Hope you enjoyed watching it. And I hope you found it useful.